Hello and welcome to episode 41 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's highlights include some BK Promotions events, a day of interviews, and a couple of orchestra recording sessions. Let's begin with another Night Dance double feature on the 10th of February 1961. The Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, started the night at the Aintree Institute and then went to the Latham Hall for yet another appearance at that venue. Both venues were naturally in Liverpool, and both events were organised by BK Promotions. In 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at an unusual venue for a beat band, the Youth Club of St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Birkenhead. The evening, that saw the lads being supported by the Zeros, was booked by their manager Brian Epstein, because of the proximity of the venue with the Technical College, where the band had performed the night before. In 1963, the Beatles momentarily left the Helen Shapiro package tour to travel to London. Due to the early start of their 11th of February recording session, they were forced to forfeit the night's performance at the Embassy Cinema in Petersborough and were substituted for the occasion by Peter Jay and the Jay Walkers. It was the final night of the first part of the tour, which would have resumed on the 25th of February. In 1964, the Beatles spent the day after their first live appearance at the Ed Sullivan Show giving a series of interviews to the press at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. The day had begun with the Fabs getting gold discs by Capitol Records president Alan Livingston for breaking the one million sales with their single I Want to Hold Your Hand. Instead of summarizing the content of the various interviews, I will post a link to a very nice YouTube video showing you the main two of the lot given to Associated Press and CBS, so that you can hear the Beatles speak for themselves. Let's move to the 10th of February 1967 for a big day at the Abbey Road EMI Studios. Today, 40 orchestral musicians were gathered to record the instrumental overdub for the 24-bar bridge section crescendo of a day in the life. Apparently, the idea of using an orchestra was John Lennon's, but it was Paul McCartney that suggested an unannotated slow crescendo from each instrument's lowest note to its highest possible pitch, gradually louder and louder. Paul had envisioned as many as 90 musicians playing the part. Producer George Martin, given the task to turn the vision into reality, for an £18 fee, about £330 in 2020 money, realized an arrangement for 40 musicians, in which the highest pitches made up a kind of E major chord. The summoned musicians paid an overall fee of £367.10, about £6,700 in 2020 money, where Eric Gruenberg, Granville Jones, Bill Monroe, Jürgen Hess, Hank Geiger, Dee Bradley, Lionel Bentley, David McCullum, Donald Wickes, Henry Dattiner, Sidney Sachs, and Ernest Scott on violin, John Underwood, Gwyn Edwards, Bernard Davis, and John Meek on viola, Francisco Gabarro, Dennis V. Gay, Alan Dalziel and Alex Nifosi on cello, Cyril McCarter and Gordon Pierce on double bass, John Marson on harp, Roger Lord on oboe, Clifford Seville and David Sandeman on flute, David Mason, Monty Montgomery and Harold Jackson on trumpet, Raymond Brown, Raymond Premeru and T. Moore on trombone, Michael Barnes on tuba, Basil Chaikov and Jack Brimer on clarinet, Anne Fawcett and Alfred Waters on bassoon, Alan Seville and Neil Sanders on horn, Tristian Fry on percussions. In the briefing before the session, Martin also pointed out that the orchestra had to approach the performance 
with the spirit of every man for himself, which was and is quite different from the usual instinct of a well-trained orchestra player, who usually follows a conductor and tries to play as one single unit with the rest of his section and the rest of the orchestra as a whole. The instruction caused a certain degree of disconcert, so much so that Martin and Paul McCartney took turns giving some sort of conducting focus to the orchestra during the performances, while engineer Jeff Emerick was left in the control room, acting on the faders to ease the recording of the crescendo. During the session, taking place between 8 pm and 1 am, there were four four-track recordings of the score, and all the tracks were used, mounting to a final crescendo with 160 musicians. The Beatles decided to turn the recording session into an event in and out itself, asking the classical musicians to come in sporting full evening dresses and some novelty items like red noses, stick-on plastic nipples, upside-down glasses, fake cigars, false eyes, and so on. In addition, they invited a host of friends to the session, including Mick Jagger and Keith Richard of Rolling Stones, Marianne Faithful, Mike Nesmith of The Monkees, Donovan, and Simon and Marike of the designer group The Fools. The evening was filmed by seven cameras under the direction of Tony Bramwell of NEMS. The film, edited with other non-Beatles footage, was turned into a clip for a day in the life, that laid unseen after the BBC banned the song for its I Love to Turn You On lyrics. The clip, released at a later date after it had circulated in bootleg form, captured the hectic evening. When the classical musicians went home, the Beatles stayed behind with some of the guests to record an idea for the coda of the song, a choir of um performed by everyone still present. 1970. Two sessions worth of notice today at the EMI Studios. Between 2.30 and 3.45 pm, Jeff Emerick produced three mono mixes of Plastic Ono Band's Eastern Karma, removing one of the two lead vocals by John Lennon, to allow for the band to film an appearance for Top of the Pops on the next day, without breaking the Musician Union's ban on mimey music on TV. Later in the evening, between 7 and 10.30 pm, Another sentimental journey session took place with the recording of the orchestra arrangement on Dream and the stereo mixing of the song. This concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. In the episode description, as promised, you'll find a link to some of the interviews given by the Beatles on the 10th of February 1964, as well as the usual link to the bibliography of the show, with its Amazon affiliate links. If you like the podcast, please let me know dropping me a line or visiting www.simonmas.com support, helping me out in one of the ways outlined there. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.